Hello everyone and welcome back to American Civil War and UK History and the Unfilled Historian. And we come round to one of the most important parts of the Battle of Torrington and that is the church. And Al is going to explain the story. Okay, so we've got Sir Ralph Hopton and his army running away down Mill Street, down over that little bridge you saw earlier, Taddybrook Bridge, making their way into Cornwall. Now a lot of the information, a lot of the, a lot of the information we get from the Battle of, the Battle of Torrington comes from a man called Joshua Sprigg. Now Joshua Sprigg was Fairfax's personal chaplain. He travelled the length and breadth of the country with Thomas Fairfax in Ireland and all his letters are a good source of information. He used to write his letters, send them by horseback straight back to Parliament. William Lenthal was the, uh, the Speaker of the Houses of Commons and he quite regularly get all the updates of what happened. In Joshua Sprigg's letter he writes by half past 11 at night, there'd be a massive explosion. The ground shaketh, um, the ground shaketh like hell itself, a great flame in the sky. He says, masonry, lead and timber do fall about the town, staving in the roofs of many houses and killing many men. A great web of lead nailed to an oaken beam falls from the sky and kills the horse of Master Rhodes, the captain of the cavalry, right beside Thomas Fairfax himself. A barrel of gunpowder lands in the square where we've been outside the Black Horse and smashes open, spilling its contents everywhere. Well, the reason for the explosion is the Royalist gunpowder store was the church. Over 200 barrels of gunpowder works out roughly one and a half tons of gunpowder was fired, blown up. We read this because a man called Robert Watt, a North Country man, was pulled from the rubble the next day, still alive. He confessed to what he'd done, but it, we read he expired from his wounds in the afternoon. He was paid 10 guineas for doing this. A lot of men died in the streets, but also in the church was over 200 prisoners, and these all died in explosions as well. And this mound in the ground is the mass grave where they were all buried. 167 men buried there. These all died when the church blew up on that night. The church blew away mostly to the west. Um, if you look over there in the distance, there was a row of houses there, they got blown down, even after the English Civil War, when um, everything settled down, the people who owned these houses kept petitioning Parliament for money for rebuilding the houses. Parliament said, no, the Royalists blew the gunpowder store, we didn't, the houses were never built. To this day, the houses have never been built, it's just gardens there now. So you look in the wall, over the, over the wall here, you still see bits of stone, we, st we still find bits of stone um, from the church that was blown up. We found a bit in the river down at Taddyport, believe it or not, back when I was younger, which had blown a long way away. Now, if you look up on the wall, you see the sign up there. This church was blown up with powder, February 16th, Amadonai, 1645, and rebuilt in 1651. Now, it says 1645, as I said earlier, we we're living by the Julian calendar, which Julius Caesar had created, and it was changed in the, uh, in the 18th century. This is why that that plaque of stone was put there before that time, obviously. Now, we did also mention a man called Hugh Peters who came down with Thomas Fairfax. He was a real radical preacher. He stirred up so much hatred towards the king, it was unbelievable. After the English Civil War, he came back to Torrington, was instrumental, instrumental in the rebuilding of the church. And uh, this was the original church tower, believe it or not, that got blown off, rebuilt, damaged in the storm in 1705. He was instrumental in rebuilding the church, a rector in Torrington for five years, but then during the restoration of the monarchy, he was hunted down as a regicide, because the hatred he stirred up towards the king, and he was executed, hung, drawn and disemboweled with a Charon cross. Um, that's the end of him. Yeah, I actually want to add a few things about Hugh Peter. Uh, is it Hugh Peters? Yeah, Hugh Peters. So I, I've been uh, listening to a book called The Killers of the King, which is about, about that same story. And Hugh Peters is actually in America at some point as well. And he actually, he's actually instrumental in um, putting together Christianity in Salem, in Massachusetts, believe it or not, which I found out through this book. So go and have a, a read of this book because it's quite interesting. But Hugh Peters is also, and they don't, they, they can't prove it. Um, it is said that he, well, he's quite influential in uh, the downfall of the king and, and having him executed. But they also, I've read somewhere that he could have potentially been on the scaffold, but they can't prove it. They don't know. 
But yeah, interesting character, Hugh Peters. But he was, like Al said, the rector of Torrington Church. Mm -hmm. So as far as the church is concerned, so obviously this was the original That's bit original here. Tower, yeah. So the rest of it is all pre pre this is all battle. This, this all this all this has been rebuilt. Yeah. Yeah, this side has been rebuilt. The oldest part of the church that survived. Um you wanna go and see that? Yes please. So come this way. Um Margaret Bolfort, which was the mother of Henry VIII, lived in the vicarage um, for quite a few years and she bequeathed her library to Torrington she liked it here in Torrington quite a lot and this piece that there is Margaret Bolfert was my, that's the oldest part of the church that survived the battle oh, okay. yeah yeah you can really see a difference can't you yeah. of course yeah. you would do if you come here look you should still see this look All around the churchyard, there's still pieces yeah. of the church which um, that got blown up. Wow, it's still here, and it's just there, it's just left there. But if you also something interesting here, if you look on the wall up there, there's one of the original. This church is blown up and put powder, but oh, it, put, wow. it was made in sandstone. Obviously, the sandstone had dissolved, and they, uh, they put it to the other side. That's and why they moved it. Yeah. 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 Um, can we just go back to the mound? So again, was it 200 prisoners? So 167. 167. The so can we get a closer look at that, please? Andy? Yeah. The burial register. I've read it myself. The, the previous precept. Let me read it. It's 167 bodies, limbs, and other parts interred in, in a great pit east of the front door. And you are looking at trying to get a plaque, aren't you? We're going to get we're going yeah. to a stone on here, a memorial stone. So when you do that, is there going to be some kind of like, big ceremony? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'll definitely be coming to that. And uh, also, there's an interesting story. Oh, oh one minute. What are you found? Oh, oh, that's a button. That's an old tun tunic button, isn't it? Oh yeah. There you go. That is. Well, it is. Look, live on American Civil War and UK history. How about that? So. Oh wow. Wow. There you go. You got a keen eye there, sir. Is it, wow. Is that, that? I don't know what that is. That a fleur de lis. Oh, shit. It looks like it, doesn't it? I was to take that back to the public wow. house and drop it in vinegar. Yeah. And over. There you go. Now there's an interesting story over here about Thomas Fairfax meeting his. Yes. Now, Thomas Fairfax is, is so important in, in the English Civil Wars, you know. So, let's talk about what really happens to Thomas Fairfax over in this spot over here. I did put it in the story, but I shall, yeah, uh, shall recap on it. A great web of lead nailed to an oaken beam falls from the sky and kills the horse of Master Rhodes, a captain in the cavalry, now on a tailor's yard from Lord General Fairfax himself right there so the church blew up a piece of the roof in lead nailed to an oaken beam falls down and kills a horse and nearly kills fairfax imagine if it had killed fairfax how the outcome well, that would be would the outcome of the english of war be a lot different i think it would have been a lot I think different, it definitely would be. yeah it's happened right where that plaque is on the wall Okay guys, so that concludes our live videos for today. We are now going to retire to the pub and get completely drunk. Um, but we, I will be about get tomorrow. Drunk. Yeah, <laughs> I will be about tomorrow, thanks for that. And uh, I will be filming the march because the signal's improved around here now. You can get 4G, can you believe it? Down in North Devon, who would have thought it? So I'll be filming the march live and I'll also be filming a little bit in the morning um, so, but thank you for all following, thank you for liking and watch this space and we'll be back again very soon. See ya, bye.